I'm going to go through a problem on an excited state of a hydrogen atom. The idea here is to cover a practical use of Dirac notation. We've done a problem like this in class already. You can see that we've written the state of the hydrogen atom, ket psi, as being proportional to a sum over various different states. Um, remember here that we're using the notation n for the quantum principal quantum number, l for the angular momentum, and m for the z component of the angular momentum. Um, so you see that we've taken 2 times 1, 0, 0, plus i times 2, 1, 1, minus 5, 3, 1, minus 1, minus 3, 4, 2, 1. Um, now the first task that we need to do is to normalize the wave function. We normalize by requiring that bra psi ket psi is equal to 1. If you want a physical picture of that, that's just equivalent to saying that we must have the probability of finding the particle somewhere in space equal to 1. Uh, it's a reasonable physical approach to take. Now, if we were to do that in bra ket notation and to sum over all of the different components, we would be able to write that the sum over n and l and m of the square modulus of c I have written that wrong of c n l m must equal 1 so we can write that as being the sum over c100 squared plus c211 squared plus c 3, 1, minus 1 squared plus c 4, 2, 1 squared must equal 1. Um, at this point, I'm going to assume that we're going to divide by some kind of normalizing factor. So I'm going to say that psi is equal to a into 2, 1, 0, 0 plus i, 2, 1, 1 minus 5, 3, 1, minus 1, minus 3, 4, 2, 1. Um, and the requirement that bra psi ket psi is equal to 1 tells us that a squared into 4 plus 1 plus 25 plus 9 must equal 1, which tells us that a must equal 1 over the square root of 39. That gives us the normalizing factor. The second question that we're going to answer um, is the probability of observing the system in the ground state. Now the ground state is simply 1, 0, 0, so the probability of observing the system in that state is the square modulus of C, 1, 0, 0, which in this case is 4 over 39. That's taking the standard approach to a basis expansion, which is to say that the probability of observing any particular basis state is the square modulus of that state. The third question that we are going to tackle is the expectation value of Lz. Um, and we write this as bra psi Lz ket psi which can also be written as the sum over n, l, and m of the square modulus of c. I've done that again. I'm going to cross out the l, c, n, l, m, multiplied by m, h bar, remembering that m, h bar is the eigenvalue for l, z. And when we do that, then we see that we have h bar into 4 times 0, so 4 is the coefficient, the square modulus co the coefficient of 1, 0, 0, and 0 is the Lz. Um, and I'm going to add to that 1 times 1, I'm going to add on 25 times minus 1, and I'm going to add on 9 times 1. And then the whole thing needs to be divided by 39, the normalizing factor. So in each case, we've taken the square modulus of the coefficient for 1, 25, and 9, and we've multiplied by the eigenvalue of Lz, 
uh, which for 1, 0, 0 is 0, for 2, 1, 1 is 1, for 3, 1, minus 1 is minus 1, and for 4, 2, 1 is 1. And when we add that all up, we find minus 15 over 39 h-bar. Finally, we might ask ourselves the question, what's the probability of observing L is equal to 1? And in this case, that's going to be equal to the sum of the square moduli of the coefficients where L is equal to 1. Um, in this case, that's 2, 1, 1 squared um, add 3, 1 minus 1 squared. Um, that's equal to 1 over 39. That's the square modulus of the coefficient of 2, 1, 1. Add 25 over 39. So therefore that's 26 out of 39. This is slightly different to the problem we've done in class, and I've done that deliberately so that you can see different examples. In particular, I've used a complex coefficient for one of the states. Remember, that just means the phase is different. It's vital to remember that complex numbers are equivalent to a shift in phase. 